All right, hi everyone. I'm 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. It is, let's see, we're looking at about 3 o'clock, about 10 after or so on our Monday afternoon. This is the weather for later tonight. I wanted to kind of get you a briefing on what we're expecting over the next 24 hours because this storm system is really going to crank up over the next several days and move off to the north and the east. And it's going to affect all of the central and eastern half of the United States. But for us tomorrow, it will actually pull a cold front through here and that could give us some severe weather. So this is late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Let's go out to about lunchtime tomorrow on Tuesday. There's the frontal boundary still back out to our west. It's windy here. Winds out of the south. Uh, so it's going to cause some erosion along the coast. But you see all these white lines. They're lines of equal pressure. And the closer they are, the more wind we end up getting. So basically, we can see a little bit of it pushing off towards the east as we go through the afternoon tomorrow. All right, so what will happen here locally is the winds will really start to pick up. They'll turn from the south. It'll be warm, be kind of muggy. But it, travel weather, keep that in mind. It is going to be a mess from Chicago and then eventually all the way to the east coast by tomorrow afternoon and early evening hours. Now, this is lunchtime for us. Still no storms. What we're going to get is a couple different waves. One wave is the line of showers and thunderstorms that moves through. That will only last about one hour in any one particular location. So Tarpon Springs, about an hour. You're going to have a good line of showers and thunderstorms go through. Pick your city, same thing, right? Now I'll go through the timing here in just a little bit. But then behind that, tomorrow evening, you see these winds here? They will push in, and that will drive the water and the tides higher for our area as we get into tomorrow afternoon as well. So basically, that's what we're going to be looking at. That will put tides up. That's going to come and go by early on Wednesday morning, but things will be active between now and then. Now look, right now we have just some light showers out there. It's not a big deal. Those will, in fact, mainly fall apart and move further off towards the north. Can't rule out a sprinkle here through the evening hours, but most of this rain you see now over Hernando and Citrus counties will be ending in the next three to four hours or so and continuing the drift off further to the north. So clouds, we will keep the clouds basically through this event. You can see the big picture shows what's happening right now. There's the low. That's where it's sitting now, and it's really starting to deepen, so it is going to continue to move off towards the east northeast like the model is suggesting. We're warming up. We were cold this morning. We'll actually warm up through midnight tonight because of the winds turning around to the south, so mid-60s now. There's the planner. Monday evening, calm, just getting breezy, certainly getting windy as we go through the evening hours and those winds turning to the south and the east around 15 miles per hour. Now, boating forecast, you really got to watch this. It, it looks great right now, but that's because the wind's blowing offshore and it's only going to pick up. We have gale watches for tomorrow. We're likely to see winds 15 to 25 knots today, but they'll go up to 40 knots tomorrow and it's going to get really bumpy, especially behind the front tomorrow night and the first half of Wednesday. Now, there's the planner for Tuesday. And notice these are the wind symbols, right, showing it's going to get windy. These are sustained winds in the 20s, gusts to near 40. And that's before the storms get here. The storms will get here between about 2 p.m. and about 7 p.m. That looks like the main timing right now. Again, that's the time that it would take the whole line to make it through the area. Any one location, it would be about an hour. So let's go 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Look at Crystal River. This main line right here is where we have the best chance for high winds in a thunderstorm, isolated tornadoes. There is a threat for tornadoes and, of course, some very heavy rainfall. But watch. This is 2.30 Crystal River. I'll go out to about 4 o'clock. You've already seen the worst of it come through. Look where it is now coming across Hernando, Pasco, right across Pinellas County. This is about 3.30, 4 o'clock tomorrow. That would be Pinellas County's best time for severe weather. And then it just marches eastward through about 630. You can see it's already through Hillsborough. So it's not going to last very long, but that whole line will come through the entire area and it will have the, the possibility of producing severe weather as it comes through. Now, the winds behind that already, this is 8 o'clock at night, but by 5, 6 o'clock, they'll already be out of the west. This is driving water up along the coast. So that's going to increase the tide levels tomorrow night. High tides at 11, 16 p.m. in St. Pete. Mother Nature's bringing the water up. Plus, we're almost at a new moon.
which means tidal, tidal levels go even higher. The swings are even higher. So here we are at about 3 in the morning. The winds will slowly start to come down. I think the worst surge effect that we're going to get out of this, the highest tides will occur between about 8 p.m. and about 3 a.m. in the morning. And then Wednesday, lots of sunshine, and we calm things down, and we do cool things down just a little bit. All right. Storm Prediction Center says from Houston to the Panhandle, a 3 out of 5 chance for severe weather. That's today. Okay, now tomorrow this all shifts east, but this area from the Panhandle up through the Carolinas, especially the coastal Carolinas, real good chance that they see some strong storms, including tornadoes. This has shifted southward today. You see the orange comes all the way down to Tampa. This morning that was up towards Citrus County, right? But it's now shifted from here back down to here. Just saying now most of us I-4 northward have about a three out of a five chance. You get south of I-4, it's about a two out of five chance. Look, it's ballpark, right? These are probabilities. It means we need to watch for some strong storms. Now, here's what it looks like when you break it down. The tornado threat, you see 5%, the brown over there? Yeah, I-4 northward, about a 5% chance. It's not a lot, but it is. It actually is when you're forecasting for tornadoes. The further south you go, the less chance we will see a tornado, but it's still there. Wind, that's 15%. That is what we'll most likely see more than anything else. And that means wind gusts 60, 70 miles per hour inside those thunderstorms that come through. And again, that's going to be about an hour period moving through your area. And you can see, obviously, the further north you go, the higher winds we're going to see. Hail does not look like it's going to be an issue for us. Now, let's talk winds. This is 10 p.m. tonight. Southeast winds, look at that, in the 20s, gusting to the 30s tonight. Now, I'm going to go through about 10 in the morning, Tuesday morning. Look at that south wind. This means strong currents along the coast, beach erosion, high surf, winds in the 20s, gusts to near 40, and that's before the storms get here. The storms are right here along this line. That's the frontal boundary. See the wind changing? That's what will happen in the evening hour. So this is 7 p.m. Frontal boundaries come all the way over here. Winds are now out of the west, and that's driving water up towards the coast. The storms are already gone. They're south and east of us. But that's when the surge threat goes. So this is 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. High tide's coming up towards 11.30 in the evening, right? High tide, wind's picking up. This is 5 in the morning on Wednesday. The winds are starting to come down. The tide is dropping. Things will slowly get better. So unfortunately, it looks like this is going to be an overnight flooding issue uh, as far as the coastal flood goes. Now, we do have a coastal flood watch in effect all up and down the coast. It does include inside the bay, Apollo Beach, all the way over, obviously, South Tampa, up into Oldsmar, Safety Harbor as well. This is going to push water levels in the bay up. Could be about two to three feet. Now, if you remember about three weeks ago or so, we did this before, right? It will be similar to that, but I think just a little bit less, maybe about a half a foot less than what we saw last time. So if you saw flooding last time when we had that low pressure move by, be prepared for potential flooding again tomorrow evening. All right, less flooding numbers the further south you go. This area up here in the Crystal River up towards Chiefland could get two to four feet because first on Tuesday morning, you've got winds blowing water right up into here and then behind it, it blows into the west. So you just have more of a catch basin, if you will, for the water to pile up. For the Tampa area, thinking about two to three feet. Now, if you, we actually have a second system trying to do something very similar on Friday. However, I think most of the, the real good energy for that will stay further to our north. So I'm not as concerned about that for Friday, but it is another day that we'll be keeping a close eye on the weather for you. Look at the roller coaster and the temperatures. It's not a huge swing either way, but you get upper 70s. This is Tuesday ahead of the front, that warm southerly wind. West winds turn to the northwest Wednesday. You see we cool off a little bit. Right before we get that next system on Friday, we warm up Friday evening. We have the next front come through Saturday and Sundays back down into the 60s. So looks like it's going to be a, a 24 hour period. We really want to stay weather aware. Don't forget to download our app. It's absolutely free. You can get forecast updates, alerts on there as well too. any kind of watch, any kind of warning that's going to come to your phone through the 10 Tampa Bay app.